I'm Sage Steckline. And I'm Ted Butler. And you're watching the BBN Weekly News. On this week's edition of BBN News, we'll be raising awareness about sexual harassment among teens. Talk with people about how 9-11 affected them and catch you up on Beaver Sports. Sexual harassment is often a difficult topic to deal with, but Amanda Garcia aims to open up the conversation among students. Did you know that every 68 seconds, someone around the U.S. is going through sexual harassment? These numbers are rising every day. How can we stop that? What can we do if it happens in our school? I talked to our principal, Mr. Byer, and our school counselor, Mrs. Price, about this serious topic. Mrs. Price, the high school counselor, explain how sexual harassment has the serious effects on victims. Effects of sexual harassment. Um, depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, uh, withdrawal from activities, not wanting to um, do homework, schoolwork, grades fa starting to fail a little bit more. She also spoke about what we as bystanders can do to intervene. I think the biggest thing we can do, whether it's sexual harassment, bullying, um, any of the things that, you know, are so prevalent, you know, any communities, any schools, not just ours, but is to speak up, to say something. Um, allowing things to continue is, it's just not effective. I think we have to, we have to speak up and we have to be willing to go talk to, tell the counselor, tell the administrators, speak to somebody, a teacher, um, and just say, this is happening, it's not right. And I think we categorize it as, oh, it's somebody making a comment about, you know, a physical part of our body, right? But it isn't, it can cross gender. Um, it can be, you know, a, a guy saying something to another guy and you know, it's a big umbrella and I think we just aren't educated to, enough to know what all qualifies. And some of it's just things that, oh, I hear it every day, it's just how the guys are. Or I hear it every day, the girls just talk like that. And I think sometimes we brush it off as normal when it isn't okay. Mr. Byer, the high school principal, outlines the policies we have regarding sexual harassment. First of all, I, we have policies in place that are in the handbook that um, you know state that sexual harassment is not, not tolerated. It is uh, something that we take very seriously and we just encourage and hope that all students would feel comfortable to come report it to us and let us know what's going on so we can take the proper steps to handle the situation and take care of um, take care of it how we need to and get them to the right people. Three students who wish to remain anonymous react to the shocking statistics surrounding sexual harassment. Something that really alters your mind and like it really changes the way that you look at people, the way that um, you think people look at you, the way you feel towards people and like just getting like close, even like getting closer to people is just scary. So I don't think that a little girl from like at age 14 should be able to like go through that. It's horrible. It really is horrible how high those numbers are and the fact that it's in the billions or millions. That's, it's so sad to like hear and see that going on and especially if someone's close to you and to hear their story, it, it just makes me wanna cry. I feel like people think it's a thing that only girls have to go through and so men don't wanna seem like weak or whatever, they want to be the macho man who's not afraid of anything and they don't want to make people see them in this way maybe. One student courageously shared their story about experiencing sexual harassment. That makes me feel scared for the future because like I don't want to have a daughter and have her be part of that statistic and I don't I don't like being part of that st statistic so I think that's just really sad and something should definitely be done about that. Thank you to the brave students who were willing to talk about the topic. And thank you to Mr. Byer and Mrs. Price for taking a stand against sexual harassment. It's up to us, the student body, to stop sexual harassment in our halls. I'm Jimena Garcia with BBN Weekly News. Thanks, Jimena. This past weekend was the 21st anniversary of 9-11. Here we have Annie to give us more on the topic. 
Sunday was the 21st anniversary of 9-11. Almost 3,000 people died when terrorists hijacked four commercial planes and crashed into the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and a field in Pennsylvania in the United States. To honor the memory of the people who died, I asked SCHS staff where they were when 9-11 happened and how this event affected them. So the morning of 9-11, my son Sam was a month old and I was on maternity leave, but that day at school was picture day and they had asked me to come take my picture with my class. So I was busy getting ready to go and I didn't have the news turned on. Uh, I was at Fort Sill, Oklahoma in the basement of Snow Hall being trained on a, an artillery computer system for fire control. What was my first reaction? Um, just disbelief, you know, the first one, the plane hits and you're just like, no, you know, you don't go to what, you don't realize what really happened at first. You're just thinking, how did this plane hit this tower? And then when you realize and you see video that a second one hits, then you hear there's other things going on, then you know this, this is huge. I think shock. I was also a little bit worried. Um, I had a brand new baby and I couldn't imagine the world that I had just brought him into. So it concerned me. That um, the military trains as a deterrence to war and that deterrence had failed and we were going to war, whether it was on our soil or someone else's. Um, how did it affect me? Um, personally, I didn't have anybody you know, close it, that was affected. But I mean, I think it just changed our world, you know, that security we had that were safe for the most part, um, to know that people from another country could come over and plan as long as they plan to do the kind of destruction they did. Yeah, it, um, it leaves you with, you know, I don't think we're as trusting as we once were. Well, back then we kind of ramped up our training. The base I was on, everything got locked down right away. They started coming up with security measures. We were staying in like a bachelor officer quarters. So we were searched going in. And then I spent nine out of my 21 years in the military outside the continental United States. Got to do the whole Iraq, Afghanistan war thing. And then now I've got my military retirement. So. It's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, I realize that the world is a lot smaller than we think it is, and we do need to pay attention to what's going on in other parts of the world because it will affect us. Thank you for sharing your stories. For BBN, I'm Annie Talbert. Thanks, Annie. Now we have Shasta to give us updates on Beaver Sports. <laughs> We are touching down on another week of Beaver Sports. I spoke with senior volleyball team member Priscilla Peregrino about the progress of the season. I think it's going pretty well. Um, we've done better than I think we've expected, especially since we're a smaller team, but I think uh, overall we've all done pretty decent. Priscilla says that it is beneficial for the team to do team building. We've gone to um, some houses, we've watched football games. Over the summer we had a whole week of captain's practice. We spent that whole week together. Um, we go out and eat sometimes. Um, I think we've done some things that help us build our team together. She mentioned that the volleyball team might have a few obstacles in their way. This year the team was, it was very good as everyone knows. This year a lot of us are new, a lot of us never played varsity. We're a younger group. Um, we really had to learn how to play with each other since a lot of us hadn't played together and I think that's really our biggest challenge this year. Priscilla mentioned Megan Trout has been a standout player so far. She's an insanely good player. She has so much potential. Um, I love it. She. I can tell she really loves the game when she does something good or when one of her teammates does something good. She, she really shows it, her emotion. Thank you, Priscilla. Make sure you support your Lady Beavers next Tuesday as they compete in Garden City. Next, Coach Meyer will be highlighting the cross country season. The boys side, our goal is to make it back to state. We've made it to state two years in a row. This hopefully will be our third. Two years ago, we got third place. So our goal is to try to get the, that plaque that's the goal on the boys' side. The girls' side, we have a good con good group of two or three, if those fourth and fifth runners, because five runners get points. So we need those girls to improve some times and improve their personal goals so we can maybe possibly make it state as a team with the girls. Thanks, Coach Meyer. Tomorrow, cross-country travels to Hugoton. 
Today, Beaver football is traveling to Millwood, Oklahoma. Tomorrow, the girls' tennis team will be competing in the Smoky Valley Tournament. Monday, the girls' golf team will be traveling to Colby where they will be competing. For BBN Weekly News, I'm Shasta Hope. Thank you, Shasta. Great to hear about our student athletes. Now, let's take a look at our weather forecast for the weekend with Delaney France. The Beavers are back into warmer weather this weekend, where the Friday night lights shine in Millwood, Oklahoma. The high is 92 and 70 for a low. Here in Scott City, the high is 91 with a low of 62. Continuing in Scott City, Saturday shows some cloudy weather with a high of 96 and a low of 63. Sunday high will be 98 with a low of 65. Have a great weekend. For BBN News, I'm Delaney France. Thanks, Delaney. And with that, I'm Thad Butler. And I'm Sage Steckline. Thank you for joining us this week.